Terence Crawford catches the big fish with a hook. In this Flow of the Fight film study, we're going to be taking a look at all the little tricks that Terence Crawford used to annihilate Errol Spence on the line en route to his ninth round TKO. Okay, it was a beautiful performance from Errol Spence, uh, or from Terence Crawford, and we're going to be breaking it down right now. So, Errol Spence getting on the line in the beginning of the, of the fight with a lot of stepping jabs here, boom, getting off the line. And Errol Spence, very sharp. We know he's sharp, we know he's fast, um, but Terence Crawford was using a lot of circling and a lot of movement to kind of drag Errol Spence around to, to break his technique down. Okay, so he didn't have to fight the sharpest and the fastest Errol Spence. And this is what's going to be what he's going to be talking about when he's complaining about um, his timing, is that it's the fact that Terence Crawford was actually the one choosing when he was going to fight Errol Spence when he was going to give him those times. Now, as he's circling here, this is the most opportune time for Errol Spence to attack Crawford because all this space over here, he has a lot of space behind him. But once he gets here, there's not a lot of space to the ropes. He doesn't have a lot of places to go. So when he gets to these positions, he's going to look to attack. But this is also when er Terence Crawford is expecting to be attacked. Now, he's going to go jab to the head, boom, just like we saw Terence Crawford pick off early, and then jab to the body. And now as we watch him throw that shot, boom, controls him up top, goes to the body, tries to... Um, Make that sequence that he has he was layering onto last time with just a jab into a double jab, um, and Terence Crawford saying, "Okay, look, I'm gonna attack you. I'm gonna kind of try to pick that shot off." Now, even though Errol Spence landed the jab to the body, um, Terence Crawford already showing that he has many counters for this move. It's a very very common move, right? If you can't counter a jab to the body, um, you haven't practiced enough, right? Again, it's very very common. Every fighter you ever fight is gonna be doing stuff like that. Okay, it's very important. Now, Terence Crawford kind of takes a break. He was been circling a second ago, and now he's circling here. And as he finishes circling, he takes a, a, a little small break. And on the outside, or on the inside of the ring, Errol Spence was using a lot of single jabs, right? Now, Errol Spence has kind of changed the pattern a little bit and used a triple jab, and he catches Errol, he catches Terence Crawford penduluming, and he actually gets him with an overhand right right here. I actually think he kind of hurt him. I think he kind of wobbled him a little bit. It was a really, really good shot. Uh, Terence Crawford did that thing where he kind of closes his eyes a little bit. I don't know. I don't know if he's like, "Am I hurt?" Oh shit, was that a good shot? But Errol Spence has to kind of change up the pattern because he wasn't able to get anything going because Terence Crawford was picking off his jab. He wasn't really um, in danger from the jab, and we're gonna be talking a little bit about that guard when we get there. Um, when we talk about that stuff, now very interesting stuff here. Okay, again on the outside, on the outside, Errol Spence when the jab comes, boom, here it comes. The jab and Errol, uh, Terence Crawford immediately penduluming off the line. Okay, now let's take a look at this move, movement here from Errol Spence. He goes, he's going to go stepping jab here, and then see how he pendulums in and he rolls under. Errol Spence does this move for offense and defense. Okay, and this move is going to play a pivotal role in the fight um, as we continue the film study and we look at how uh, Terence Crawford figures out a way to alienate um, Errol Spence from that little move there. But check out. Terence Crawford not really wanting to sit on the line with him, right? Again, if he attacks him when he's in the in the middle of the ring, and there's all this space for him to keep moving, okay? Boom, pushing Terence pushing Terence Crawford off the line, repeatedly moving him off the line, and making it very difficult if he attacks him on the outside here, right? Sometimes to get any offense going. So having to really take advantage of when he does get him there. Now he's gonna jab and watch him pendulum in one. Now, this is a 1-1-2. One, one, it doesn't look like it because he's not using both of his jabs. Uh, Usyk would, but he's not. He's going to jab. He leaves this space open. Again, pendulum's in, body shot. And now, this was actually a really good round all the way up until this part here uh, for Errol Spence. I think that he still won the round, clearly. But it was at this point where all of a sudden, even though he had landed several really good shots, Errol Spence, he had pinned him on the ropes, landed some overhands. Uh, landed a right hand to the body as well, or a left hand to the body as well, uh, that I realized that, you know, Crawford wasn't in any danger at all. He was going to be able to compete with Spence, um, even though the round one was very, very good for Errol Spence. Now, round two starts off really interesting coming forward. Again, the same kind of motion, but look at him get him over the top, right? Instead of using a single punch on the outside, Terrence Crawford, small pendulum, and he comes in with that big overhand shot. Again, I'm not sure if Terrence Crawford was expecting him to throw that shot. It kind of goes around the guard a little bit, so maybe he thought he was going to block it. Uh, but, again, catching Crawford with a pretty decent shot. 
Um, and we're going to talk about that at the end of the fight because there are some points in the fight where it was very obvious that Crawford was going to be winning the fight. Jab, pendulum's in, right? Throws the body shot, and now again, there's that shot. In, instead of going, he's, he threw the head shot last time, so Crawford's going to go under, try to get under that shot. Um, uh, Spence does go to the body here. Um, but Crawford reading that weight, right? Reading his weight coming forward, and again, back, forward, back, forward. Very easy to time and pick off um, Spence's rhythm, right? Very, very... You know, I don't want to say he's a rhythm fighter, but it's the bladed stance, how he always comes through with that right shoulder forward. And we're going to talk about that um, as the fight goes on. But again, jab, here he comes, pendulum. And again, this was a very, very big moment in the fight. Here comes the right hand here, or the left hand here from Spence. And Crawford's picking it off. He times the pendulum here, jab, pendulum. He times it. He's crouching. He's getting all his weight to the ground. And before Errol Spence can defend that position, boom, he smacks him right on the chin with the right hook. A beautiful, beautiful shot. Pendulum's with him and everything. Um, and again, all those little sequences where Spence gets to the front foot, jab, pendulum. There's so much time there. And and Spence is not controlling with the double jab, right? Jab, jab, and threatening Crawford's position. He gives him too much time to set up this counter. Um, and this winds up being a really, really huge, uh, pivotal part of the fight. Okay, now, another thing that was going on, again, Errol Spence, when he's throwing this jab... In the second round, Errol Spence started making, or Terence Crawford started making a real effort to counter it. Again, catching the shot. Again, he has complete control of this shot. And a few things, right, when we talk about this, um, very often if we take a look at where Terence Crawford's hands are when Errol Spence meets him on the line, you see how they're at his eyebrows? They're at his eyebrows, right? Very, very, very important, okay? I get criticized this a lot on my channel. See where his elbows are? They're not at his body, right? He's guarding the line because the line's up here, right? You can't block the body and the head. You can't block everything. You're going to have some openings, so you got to choose. Check out the Fouts Boxing Combat System if you guys want to know and understand the best ways to control the line. If you want to learn two-foot punching, you want to learn how Crawford generates so much power, uh, check out the Faust Boxing Combat System. I'm the first coach to understand how the kinetic chain works and how your weight works from the ground up with both feet, not just one foot pushing and rotating, but driving um, and coiling and getting the most out of your kinetic chain. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about that later, talk about some of this technique and stuff. Um, but catching that shot and then countering him immediately after. Okay, now watch him jab to almost pendulum in, right? Now, again, another one of those things that was going on he gets to the line, and again, Errol Spence back, front. He gets to the front. This is when he's going to throw his jab. Now, if we pay attention, he's still bladed. His right shoulder is still forward. His left shoulder didn't come forward. This is why Errol Spence doesn't really have any good right hooks. This is why he doesn't really throw the right hook from the front foot. He doesn't really throw jabs from the front foot either, which is why he's going to you know, control with his lead hand or punch with his lead hand. Um, and we're going to talk about some of that stuff, but he gets to the line. Terrence Crawford's picking that shot off and countering him. And his jab was just annihilating uh, Spence's jab. And I said it probably a dozen times that Crawford was going to have a better jab than Spence anyway, um, even though that's Spence's best game. Um, but picking him off, punching with him this time. Beautiful, beautiful work. Penduluming here. And now Spence having to pick him off, right? Having to see, okay... Uh, back, front foot, back foot. And as, as Errol Spence gets to the front foot again, Crawford's looking to time him, right? Smash him with the jab. Um, and uh, he was able to take away Errol Spence's jab. You know, one thing, Errol Spence doesn't have any head movement. He doesn't, he doesn't, uh, another thing, right? Not only does he not have any head movement, but his rear hand is always tight. He's almost always making a fist with it. And he can't catch punches. He can't pick them off like Crawford. Jab to the body. Now, gets to the line. And now, picking off the jab, right? Crawford assumes it's going to be a jab to the head. He parries. It's a jab to the body. Boom. And he goes down with his weight. And now he springs up to throw the two. And just checking the line. Seeing if he's going to be able to get him. Timing it, right? Seeing if he's going to be able to get Errol Spence with that shot. This is a very, very, very important sequence again later. And again, off the jab to the body. A very common move. Everyone throws a jab to the body, right? Crawford throws a jab to the body, right? Again, getting to the front of the line, boom. When he gets there, 
anticipating that he's going to throw his own jab, getting his head off the line, throwing a jab to the body. And Errol Spence tries to follow up, and he's like, eh, maybe next time. Gets to the front of the line, catches the jab to the body here, and, and then now following up with the two into the one. And this is a very, very pivotal moment here. He winds up actually dropping Errol Spence with this move, jab to the body, as Errol Spence tries to get his little get back here. Boom. Gets parried by Crawford. Boom. And he gets hit with the two, hit with the one, and winds up getting dropped. A beautiful, beautiful sequence from uh, Terrence Crawford. And again, just following up. Very, very basic boxing. Um, and again, if we look at him, on the outside, on average, Errol Spence throwing one punch at a time when they're more in the middle of the ring. Right? Very, very important. And waiting when they get to the outside, right? Uh, when the ring is cut off for him to be more active, okay? But by the end of the second round, um, it was almost all Terrence Crawford. He had kind of started picking him up. Now, back to the third round. Errol Spence comes right out the gate swinging, right? And I love it. I love the attitude from Spence. Um, there was not a single point in the fight where he really laid down. He was looking for openings, moving. He never started holding, and we're going to talk about that later. Um, about, you know, not going out on your shield or whatever, um, but the inevitableness of boxing against a good fighter. But he gets out here, throws the 1-1-2, catches Crawford in the middle of his pendulum, and again, I think he wound up hurting him with a good shot here. Decent, decent shot. Got a little running. Again, this is a, this is the interesting thing because we have some fighters like, like Danny Garcia who laid down in the fight, right, versus Spence. He didn't even try to win. He just knew he was just trying to survive. Um... And that was a huge mistake for him. He should have fought hard to win that fight. You know, and, and Errol Spence did not do that, even though um, by the fifth round or the fourth round, the fight was all Errol Spence or all Terrence Crawford. Now, again, coming forward with the jab, trying to push Crawford to the back uh, and get him to the ropes. And Crawford reading his weight. And again, very, very difficult sometimes for Errol Spence because of the timing, because of that rhythm that, that Errol Spence or Crawford was reading. For him to pin him down, to catch him with shots, getting more and more difficult, again, moving off the line when he doesn't want to engage. But some really, really sneaky stuff here, right? Stepping jab here, nothing there, and he gets on the line here and throws this overhand shot, a beautiful, beautiful overhand right. This is going to be a really, really interesting move later, okay? We're going to be taking a look at this later. This is a sick shot, um, but sneaky, right? Getting on the line, not with a jab like he usually does but getting on the line with an overhand right and catching Crawford again again very very uh a lot of effort from Errol Spence in this fight now this was sequence in particular I just thought was awesome so he jumps on the line with the with the probing jab one double jab two gets Crawford right and then he has to come forward again put the pressure put the pressure and then Crawford outboxes and moves his head off the line, catches him with his own jab, with his own rhythm, right? Boom. And now Spence coming forward, right? They fight on the inside. Crawford smashes him with the body shot, controls him here. Steps off the line when Errol Spence comes in with the body shot, counter, counter. He's annihilating Spence on the inside. Annihilating him in this sequence. He completely outboxes him on the outside, moves to the inside, steals the body shot. Spence tries to steal the body shot. Crawford jumps off the line and flies back in the line with a 2-3. Beautiful. Now, Errol Spence planted, completely planted, throws a two, doesn't know what to do with his body mechanics. He doesn't know where his head goes. He doesn't know where his shoulders go. Look at his shoulder plane. It's terrible. His back leg completely comes up off the ground. And all that time, Crawford doesn't have enough time to get him that, but before Crawford or Spence can get his head out of there from the two three, Spence or Crawford is able to hit him. Beautiful, beautiful shot. And again, people said that Spence was going to be a better inside fighter. And that's because you guys don't even know what inside fighting is supposed to look like. Uh, you know, again, like I talked about in every single video that I made for this, you know, Spence was going to try hard. He was going to throw a lot of straight punches. Uh, then he's going to put a lot of weight on the line and push Crawford around, make Crawford work real hard. Now, I want to talk about this real quick. If we take a look at this, we know that Errol Spence is the taller fighter, right? So why are Crawford's hands higher than his, right? Look at where they are versus look at where Errol Spence's hands are. Right? And he's just going to throw that shot right over the top. Right? It's very important that when Crawford gets on the line, and this was a question that somebody had, when Crawford gets on the line, he needs this glove in a position that's ready to interact with this one. And if it's lower than this one, then this one's going to be able to hit him right through this line. 
right? Now, what do we know about Crawford or Spence's other glove? Well, it's over here. Crawford's glove is right here. Spence's glove is so low, he can't get it into position. Now, Errol Spence also fights in a blade. So when his head goes back in this straight line here, right? If Crawford just in just imagines that he's going to throw that punch deeper than he wants, on average, he's going to get that shot anyway. Even if Spence pulls back, he's still going to catch him before he gets all the way away. Because his head's always going to be on the line and a track where his feet are, right? Now, I just wanted to use this clip to highlight some of those problems with his hands. And again, Crawford was so good with his jab on the line. He just busted Spence up. Um, really, really, really a lot of stuff. <clears throat> now, in the fourth round, Errol Spence, or Terrence Crawford, really started making an effort as Spence would come forward. And he would try to counter him with these jabs here. So he's going to come forward with the jab and pendulum forward jab. And here he comes. And Crawford's trying to counter him. All right. Coming forward with the jab, counter him with the hook here as he pendulums, right? Jab, pendulum forward, counter. And now he's trying to counter him again on the inside. And again, jab, pendulum, two, one, 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 two. Errol Spence doesn't do well when you throw punches at him. He shells up. So once he starts coming forward, boom, pendulum, bop, 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 bop. Catches him with all these shots and a couple of follow-ups. And then another body shot, another body shot. That one looked kind of low, but that's not the point. Um, but because Errol Spence has to come forward behind that right shoulder, he has no chance, no choice, because he never brings his rear shoulder forward. He always stays in this blade. These are the only games that he's able to play. Okay? And now, again, even though Crawford didn't really... He didn't really, like, set this up or, like, you know, it wasn't like this, like super well thought out thing it was just kind of an accident right he counters the jab here boom catches counters right Errol Spence never moves his head he doesn't catch punches his hands are always closed boom boom he's in this bad position he doesn't punch when he's being punched at right he just snaps into these punches boom boom he's able to just easily take advantage of him again Errol Spence doesn't really block punches when he gets on the line either he usually punches when he gets on the line right now again, 1-1-2, one, one, pretty good shot. Again, penduluming, jab, penduluming into the two. Now he's going to jab, pendulum, and get caught with the hook. Again, just like I talked about in my pre-fight film study, um, Errol Spence was going to have to be in constant momentum. He was going to have to be constantly chasing Crawford, and Crawford allowed him to chase him. Walked him into tons and tons of big punches. Right? Catches him with this huge, huge shot here um, and wobbles him, you know. And again, he can only come behind the jab. Boom. Catches him kind of with a parry here. Starts fighting him, right? Boom, boom, boom. Errol Spence doesn't respond to being engaged with mid-sequence. This is going to be a huge problem for him going forward once people realize all you got to do to beat Errol Spence is just freak out and start throwing punches when he gets on your line. Uh, jump on the line with the jab. Errol Spence counters him. Sixth round. Getting real close. Jumps on the line. Errol Spence counters him. Or Terrence Crawford counters him, counters him, counters him, counters him. And just starts throwing lots and lots of punches when Spence jumps on his line. Just some beautiful boxing, beautiful timing. Bop, 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 bop. Uh, missed that last shot, but that's not super important. Jab. Pendulum's in. Body shot. Now, again, people said that Errol Spence had a really good hook. I just wanted to show this hot boom. Jab. Pendulum's in. Blocked. He doesn't move his head. Look at his shoulders. What is he doing with his weight? Jumping up into the air, throwing this shot. Both of his legs completely come off the ground. He doesn't move his head at all. Look at his shoulders. There's just so many technical flaws. People talk about fundamentals. Look at your boy. Okay? Just like I talked about pre-fight. This was a mismatch, guys. Now, jab, pendulum's in. Boom, and Crawford smashes him with that shot. Really, really mean-looking shot. Uh, and again, just over and over and over again, counters him here. And watch him jab. He's going to jab. And watch Errol Spence penduluming in off of that jab again, getting countered. Boom, getting countered. Here he comes, jab, pendulums in, getting countered with the hook again. All off that same rhythm, that same move, over and over and over again. Uh, and then we get toward the end of the fight, uh, or the end of the clips. And uh, 
Errol Spence is going to jab. He's going to get on the line, and Errol Spence catches him, with, or Crawford catches him with a hook, and then catches him with another hook and drops him in the seventh. Um, again, this is not a highlight. There's a lot of stuff in the fight. Um, this was actually a really, really good fight. Even though a lot of these clips make it look like it was very one-sided, the scoring was one-sided. But there were moments in the fight where Errol Spence, you know, you know, everyone fights hard for three rounds, right? Everyone has so so much energy. Everyone can snap and throw hard shots. You got to work hard, you know, to not get knocked out at all times of the fight, okay? Um, but Terrence Crawford made this fight, for the most part, look easy. He dominated Errol Spence uh, en route to knocking him, basically knocking him out. He would have knocked him out if the fight kept going. Um, he dominated him on the line with the jabs. He dominated him with the counters. Uh, Errol Spence's technique, again, with the bladed stance, it doesn't work, guys, because you can't manage your weight, your weight always winds up flying around like Errol Spence at best. And that's if you're really good at it. If you're really good at it, you'll wind up like Errol Spence, getting knocked out by Crawford. Okay. Um, now, you guys want to check out the full film study? We're going to be doing one on Patreon in just a few minutes. I'll be going through and rewatching the fight. And it's going to be funny. We're going to talk a lot of crazy stuff. Um, but it was a beautiful performance from Errol Spence, I mean, from uh, Terrence Crawford. Uh, again... Like I've, I've been saying for years that this was, number one, it was going to be a mismatch. Um, at best, at best, the fight was going to look like uh, Postal chasing Crawford around, except Crawford was going to eventually catch him and knock him out. Um, and it didn't really look like that. There were some, some rounds where Errol Spence was able to come forward with the 1-1-2s and smack Crawford like I, I showed. Um, but for the most part, Crawford was able to alienate Errol Spence from his jab. He beat him on the line with the jab over and over and over again. Um, uh, stopped him from being able to throw power punches because, again, the bladed stance. He didn't have a rear hand probe, right? That one anomaly right hand, lead right hand over the top in the third round, I believe it was, um, was one of the only lead right hands that he, lead left hand that he threw. Left hand, guys, sorry. Um, and he just didn't have enough tools to get on the line with Crawford. You know, it, it, not, you know, like Crawford said, the, the, no fight is easy because the fight is won in the gym. Crawford still is going to have to torture himself if they fight again. And like, to be honest, I don't know why they should fight again. I don't think they should. Um, and it's interesting, this is the best performance of, of Crawford's career, right? And he immediately wants to move up. Um... I think that he should, number one, um, he should fight Stanionis. That's an easy fight. It's the mandatory. No one would give him shit for fighting Stanionis because Stanionis is undefeated and bigger than him. Uh, <clears throat> Stanionis might hurt him like uh, Kavalioskis, right? I don't think he can drop him. I don't think he's as good. Um, he's very likely just going to get knocked out uh, very easily, even if he catches Crawford. But I think that Stanionis is an easy fight for, for Crawford. He should take that fight. You know, he should take that fight. I think that this version of Crawford would beat would beat Boots. Um, so I don't think I don't I you know I don't think that's a bad fight for him either. Uh, I think that he fought beautifully. Boots is a much harder fight than Spence. Um, um, as I and I think that you know of the people in Stanionis is probably the only guy in the in the division left that. Spence would beat. I don't think he beats uh, Thurman. Although he fought hard, man, and, and he was tough. He might be able to break Thurman down and keep coming and, you know. But Virgil Ortiz, well, he's not in the in this division anymore, but he would have beat Spence. And Ennis beat Spence as well. Um, again, they're all the new breed, right? Errol Spence is like <clears throat> that old school... Early, late 80s, early 90s, no head movement fighter, exactly like Derek James was, right? No no hooks for whatever reason. Um, but, um, but Crawford showed that, that he's the best in the division. He showed it hands down. Um, this was his black belt test. He fought a guy that was bigger than him, that people thought was going to beat him, that could beat him. Um, and he dominated him, you know? <clears throat> Um, I've been saying it for years as well. Um, Terrence Crawford is 
twice the fighter that Floyd Mayweather is. Okay? He also would have beat Floyd Mayweather. Um, and I think that he would have beat Floyd Mayweather handily. Um, he's a much, much craftier fighter than Shane Mosley. He's a harder puncher than Shane Mosley. Like, Shane Mosley was a good fighter, you guys. Shane Mosley cracked Floyd Mayweather, right? Cracked him a couple times in one in round two, right? I think that Spence, I think that Crawford would have stopped him. I don't think he would have been, you know. Anyway, that's not a super important conversation to have. Um, if Crawford is going to, or if Spence is going to look to, um, if Spence is going to look to beat Crawford in a rematch, he's going to need a new coach, okay? He's going to need someone to teach him some new stuff um, because with what he has on the table, the circling, the movement from Crawford, and the again, the ability to drag Errol Spence around and get him to attack him in positions that are going to get his feet off the ground because that's the only time he can score, it's just inevitable. That's, that Crawford is going to catch him with the hard shot. And because he's moving around, he's taking steam off of Errol Spence's punches. Um, anyway, uh, we're going to be doing another film study, the full fight film study on Patreon. We're going to be talking about more technique and stuff. Um, again, if you guys want to learn the most comprehensive combat system in, in all of combat sports, check out the Felt's Boxing Combat System. Um, if you want to learn how power punching really works, if you want to hit hard like Terrence Crawford, if you want to hit hard like, like Tank Davis, if you want to know exactly what it is that Ryan Garcia does with his left hook, if you want to know and you want to learn how to do it too, check out the Thoughts Boxing Combat System, okay? I'll teach you what to do with every single piece of your, your, comp, your, your kinetic chain uh, so you can be the Bruce Lee of boxing too, like Terrence Crawford. Uh, anyway, um... Yeah. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all that fun stuff. Thanks, guys.